Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, my name is Professor Dr. Avinash Tadich. I am the Dean of Institute of Legal Studies and Research, GLA University, Mathura. Students, today we are going to talk about a topic which is like from the both sides, it's important as a company and the consumer. If consumers are happy with the company, then the company doesn't need to promote too much because the consumers are the best uh, brand ambassador of any company or any product. On the same side, if consumers are not happy, then a company cannot grow. So, as a business person, you need to understand that whether your consumers are happy or not. So, when we talk about the consumers, we need to discuss about the rules and regulations which are protecting the consumers. At the different side, at the personal level, as a consumer, you always want that when you are investing your money, time, your resources, your opportunities, you must get best thing from the product or services. So, what if something goes wrong, like you buy something and you believe that that is not as per the standard or as per the promised, then obviously you go for litigation. But the issue becomes that as a small consumer, when you are fighting against a very big company, okay, it is very difficult to fight against those big companies because they have deep pockets, they have huge resources and for a simple consumer, like suppose you are buying a things of like 2000 rupees, 3000, 5000 and if you go to a normal court and then you have to hire a lawyer, you know, you have to put uh, the registration fee, the court fee and then for 5000, 10000 obviously you do not want to go for any litigation. So, to, to make the things in the favor of consumer, uh, government in 1986, they brought a law which is protecting the consumer and uh, without any doubt consumers are the king in the market and if we do not create a strong consumer protection law and ecosystem in any economy, uh, economy cannot grow because economies are growing because consumers are buying. Okay? So, today we will learn about law on consumer protection. Consumerism is a movement that pro promotes the interest of buyers of goods and services. See, there was a time that we believed that we really do not care about the consumer or the buyer. You know, if it is a free will of parties, if they want to buy, they buy, if they do not like to, they do not buy. And if they are not happy with the services, they can go to the court. So, the before the movement of consumerism, the consumer was not in the center of a business. But in last 60, 70 years when we realized that consumer is the king, the movement of consumerism took the consumers in the center stage. Its main aim is to protect the consumer from unsafe or low quality uh, of products, uh, fraudulent advertising, labeling, packaging and business practices that limits competition. Okay. So, it is not only that sometimes they give you wrong product, sometimes they do bad marketing also, fake marketing, fake promises. Okay? So, that is also harmful for a consumer. It promotes adequate information about the product so that consumer can take right decision in purchasing goods and services. It is not only about that the, the product is good or bad, it is about that as a consumer, you must have law in your favor to know what is this project. Okay, what is this service? Until unless you do not know a complete picture about that product or service, your decision making is quite risky. So, as a consumer, you must have right to know that what it, what it is, you know, it is like suppose if you want to buy something and if you are a vegetarian, for example, so you want you want to know whether it is a vegetarian or not. Because uh, because now, you know, the most of the products are so chemically used and industrial product 
it's difficult to know for a consumer whether it's a uh, you know vegetarian or non vegetarian it's a vegan or not vegan sometimes you have allergies with some few products and you don't want to consume them so as a consumer you must know what it is it also tries to inform consumer consumers of the effective means of getting compensation for damage or inconvenience caused by defective products and services so if you go to a court room and if you don't get the compensation you know on time then obviously you don't believe in the market system anymore so compensation at the right time must be the right of all consumers due to increasing standards of lifestyle various consumer distresses like the lapse in the services offered by various utilities the airlines railway uh, telecommunication electricity board nursing homes all are growing so now you know because our lifestyle has changed earlier when we were living in small villages or in small towns people were buying very few things people were uh, depend you know lives of the people were very much are depending on their ecosystem then you know the their self sustained ecosystem but now because of the change in the lifestyle we are very much depending on the agencies outside of our local ecosystem like for example if you want to fly if you want to go from one place to another place uh, from india to abroad you have to take services of the airlines there is no other option okay telecommunication like for example the mobile internet they are so important so you know valuable in our life and we don't have any other source we have to go to those companies only okay so the the increasing standard of life is very much connecting to the consumerism it is the wholesalers and middlemen who indulge in illegal activities like dumping of goods to create artificial uh, problems and raise the price of commodities which will increase their profits so sometime it happens that the middlemen wholesalers they also increase the price of goods they create artificial problems in the market and that is also against the consumer so consumer consumerism is a national problem affecting every section of society such a man and woman young or old or child you know so irrespective of the sex gender age everyone is affected through this consumerism problem that if consumers are losing everyone is losing hence consumer protection is a form of social action which will be designed to achieve the well-being of one or group within the community so it's a basically social action it's not a see the law always come after first the society needs to understand that what they want so in late uh, in europe or in usa in late 60s and 70s they started talking about consumer rights and they enacted laws in our country in 1986 when we started talking about the rights of consumer should we give some rights to consumer should we talk about the consumers because before that nobody was talking consumers right in our country and they never had any protection from the law so there was a demand from the society that we need to have some rules regulations which can protect consumers okay so that's why we enacted consumer laws ways and means of consumer protection how a consumer can be protected the following can be and the means like the lok adalat public interest litigations redressal forums and consumer protection councils awareness program consumer organizations consumer welfare funds and legislative measures so these are the things a consumer can be protected the first option is lok adalat so lok adalat is an informal system in our country where the pt small disputes between consumers and service providers can be solved outside of the court so suppose you have a dispute with your mobile company or you have a dispute with your electricity company and the amount is not that big maybe 4000 5000 7000 so instead that you keep fighting against that company the company is also hiring a lawyer you are also hiring a lawyer so the courts they create a lok adalat where both can sit and solve that dispute in their uh, own interest okay so that can be one public interest litigations as you know that if the consumers believe that there is something wrong in market and that wrong is affecting public at large that they can also file public interest litigations in high court and supreme court there are some redressal forums and consumer protection councils where people can go and file a case awareness program is very much important until and unless consumers are not aware of their 
consumer protection laws how they will go and protect them like for example if i don't tell you that there is a district consumer forum in your district where you can go and file a case and you don't need a lawyer that's the awareness part you know if you know that you don't need a lawyer the procedure will be very simple you don't need to pay any money to file your case so if once you know that there is a law there is a ecosystem and that doesn't involve lawyers heavy fees technicalities then maybe you will be more uh, you know interested to protect your rights then consumer organizations there are a lot of consumer organizations in india where uh, those organizations are working at the top level creating lobbying awareness dealing with the government legal institutions to promote the consumer protection then consumer welfare funds created by the private organizations and by the government then finally the legislative measures which is creating a law or the institutions to protect the consumer so first we need to understand who is a consumer okay consumers buys and products use a product with the approval of its buyer and hires any services these are the people such a person is called as a consumer it must be noted the size of the product or the amount of the money paid for the purchase is irrelevant even if you buy 1 rupees product you are a consumer so a consumer case can be filed in connection with the purchase of a pen as well as the purchase of a penta house and also includes offline and online transactions through electronic means or by tele shopping or direct selling multi level marketing so it doesn't matter that in by what means you are buying your products okay and what is the level of your uh, uh, buying you are buy, you are buying a product of 1 rupees or 1 crore you are a consumer okay you are buying online or offline you are a consumer you are doing multi level marketing direct selling tele shopping in any way if you are buying or hiring some services you are a consumer who is not a consumer that is also important to understand the person who obtains good or services for free suppose you are getting some a free service and that service is uh, defective you are you cannot go for the consumer protection rights because you are getting that product or service free okay obtains or goods or services for the purpose of resale means of commercial purpose okay then you are not a consumer suppose you buy a, a car Uh, you you are a businessman you have a, a showroom and you buy a car to sell uh, to resell that car and if that car is defective then you cannot go under the consumer protection law then obviously you can go to civil court you can go to criminal court but you cannot go to the consumer protection law because the commercial transactions are not included in, in the consumer protection law but a person who buys goods and use them exclusively for the purpose of earning his livelihood by means of self employment is a consumer okay so suppose you are a self employed person and you are just using it for yourself okay so suppose if i buy a car as a businessman and i want to use that car for my business it's not resale okay then i will be considered as a uh, consumer what is the aim of consumer protection act 2019 so the law was enacted in 1986 but then it was amended in 2019 and i want just to tell you the latest law latest situation the basic aim of the consumer protection act 2019 to save the rights of the consumer by establishing authorities for timely and effective administration and settlement of consumer disputes so time is very important and effective administration and settlement of consumer disputes consumer rights consumer rights is an insight into what rights uh, what consumer holds when it comes to seller which provides the good so first is right to safety okay as a consumer what type of rights you have under the consumer protection law so these are the rights first is right to safety okay it means rights to be protected against the marketing of goods and services which are hazardous to life and property before purchasing consumer should insist on the quality of the products as well as the guarantee of the products and services so this is your first right you must have the capability to know and see whether that product is good for your health and life and property or not if that product itself is hazardous like suppose you buy an electronic item 
and that electronic item is defective and because of the defect in the article uh, in that product there is a fire in your home. Okay. So, in that situation the safety of your uh, product or your services is your fundamental right. The second is right to be informed. It means right to be informed about the quality, quantity, potency, uh, potency purity, standards and price of the goods as so as to protect the consumer against unfair trade practices. So, when I say right to be informed means that you must know all these things, what is the quantity, you know what is the weight of this particular product, Quali uh, quality, what is the quality of this product, uh, a potential means how potential it is like how powerful it is, you know you should know that how powerful it is, then purity, then standards and price of the goods, you should know the price also. Okay. So, all these things are right to be informed, then right to choose. It means right to be assured wherever possible of access to variety of goods and services at competitive price. This right can be better exercised in a competitive market where a variety of goods are available in competitive process. Then right to be heard. It means that consumer interest will receive due consideration at appropriate forum. It also includes right to be represented in various forums formed to consider the consumer welfare. So, there has to be some mechanism within the company like suppose if the consumer wants to say something there has to be a consumer welfare, a consumer call, a consumer setup where you can call or you can write an email that I am not happy with your services, there are some defective mechanism and within the company there has to be a mechanism where someone is taking care of consumer uh, complaints. Okay. And outside of the company there has to be some mechanism at the district level, state level and national level where consumers can go and redress his uh, concerns. Right to seek redressal, it means right to seek redressal against unfair trade practices and uh, exploitation of consumers. It also includes right to fair settlement of the genuine grievances of the consumer. So, right to seek redressal, that there, this is your another right where you can say that if I am not happy with someone else or the product or service there has to be a mechanism where I can go for my genuine complaints okay, and right to consumer education. It means that right to acquire the knowledge and skills to be an informed consumer throughout life. Ignorance of consumers particularly in the rural con uh, consumers is mainly responsible for their exploitation. If consumers are not aware of their uh, rights like all these rights about the consumer protection law then their ignorance can be one of the reason that why they are being exploited. The act of 2019 has many new features, so simplified dispute resolution process. One of the most change in that a pecuniary jurisdiction has been enhanced like the district forum up to 1 crore, state commission between 1 crore and 10 crore and national commission above 10 crore. So, if your disputes are falling under this category you can approach to these forums. Other allied changes are as follows deemed admissibility after 20 days of filing. So, once you file your case and if the court or the consumer court is not giving you any answer then within 20 days it will be considered that your case has been admitted. Okay. So, in 21 days they have to give you an answer if they do not give you an answer in within 21 days your case is presumed and deemed to be admissible. Empowerment of consumer commission to enforce their orders. So, sometime it happens that the, the these you know the, the last slide district forum, state forum, national forum they issue an order, but they cannot enforce it. They are again relying on the virtue or the mercy of the court and police. So, now they have got some power of the courts where they can enforce their order directly. Appeals only on the question of law after second stage. So, from the state to national consumer, now appeal is only possible when there is an issue of law rather than facts. Filing from place of residence wherever you buy your product, suppose like you are traveling and you buy some product, you come back to home and now earlier the law was that you have to go there, but now the thing is you can file your case from your residence. Like suppose you are living in city A, 
you go to city B for traveling or living or whatever reason, you know, then you come back to your city and that time you come to know about the defection or some wrongdoing, you can file case in your home uh, city and e-filing is also possible. Earlier it was like lot of, you know, people they could not go to the court because of uh, so many reasons. Now even the e-filing is possible. Video conferencing for hearing is also possible because of Corona, now it is well accepted. General Consumer Protection Authority CCPA, while the sector regulates essentially services standard setting bodies and seek to ensure a even playing field between government and other stakeholders. It is an, so government of India has created a new regulatory body where the consumer protection and laws ecosystem will be monitored and regulated and promoted by a central regulators like the SEBI, RBI and all these central regulators. So, central consumer protection authority will take care of it. It is an executive agency to provide relief to class of action, uh, swift executive remedies and pr uh, propose to the bill through the CCPA. The CCPA will be empowered to promote, protect and enforce the rights of consumer as a class. So, this is a new concept with this law is introducing the class action. So, the concept of class action comes from the USA. The concept is that in some scenario, a class of consumers are being affected by the company or by the uh, opposite party. Like for example, if there is a defect uh, in car and not only in one car, but maybe in 10,000 cars. So, instead of all those 10,000 uh, car owners, they go and file individual cases, they can file a class action suit. Okay. So, all those 10,000, maybe few of them can file the case as, as a class action and other guys can just join them or even if they do not join them, if the judgment comes in their favor, then they will get the relief. So, class action suit concept has been introduced in India first time by the Consumer Protection Authority. CCPA would also make intervention to prevent com, uh, consumer detriment arising from unfair trade practices. So, it will be proactive agency also, not only uh, judiciary and reactive, but it will take some preactive uh, pre measures to prevent consumer exploitation. The agency can also initiate class action including enforcement, recall, refund, return of unsafe products, goods and services and impose penalties. So, see the problem is that sometime as I said the class action suit was not available in India before this law, but now people can go for the class actions. It happens in the uh, real estate sector very often where the maybe 50, 100, 200 people they have the same concern. So, instead of going for a uh, multiple litigation they can go for a class action. And the other benefit of this class action suit that suppose if one person is losing uh, 1 lakh rupees, then that person is supposed to go to the district court. But what if uh, 1000 people are losing 1 lakh rupees each, so then it goes to 10 crore rupees, so then they can directly go to the national consumer forum. So, they do not need to do litigation at the district forum and consumer forum, directly they can go to national consumer forum, so it saves that time also. It will regulate matters relating to violation of consumer rights, unfair trade practices, alteration of products and misleading advertisement. Provisions for deterrent punishment to check misleading advertisement. Authority will have power to impose a penalty on a manufacturer or an endorser or up to 10 lakh rupees and imprisonment for up to 2 years for a false or misleading advertisement. This is also a very new change in the law that endorsers uh, liability. So, endorsers liability that when a celebrity or a big person is endorsing a product, when they are saying that you know you buy this cream and you will be very bright and very colorful, you know um, and they are endorsing so many things. So, you see in advertisement big celebrities are claiming that if you use this product then this will happen, that will happen. I do not want to name any celebrity or any product. But you can easily see that so many celebrities are endorsing wrong products, they are making wrong claims. Okay. So, the now law says that when you are endorsing a product, you have to take responsibility because people are buying that product trusting on your own brand. Like suppose if an actress says that if you use this shampoo, your hair will be great. Okay. 
So, it means that the actress has to take the responsibility that this shampoo is safe for the hair. If something goes wrong uh, in that shampoo, then not only the manufacturer, okay, because ultimately the manufacturer is responsible, but endro uh, endorser that actress can also face the liability and the liability can be up to 10 lakh rupees and imprisonment for up to 2 years. Presently, consumer only have a single point of access to justice which is time consuming. Additional shift executive remedies are proposed in the bill through central consumer protection authority. Power to inquiry or investigation. The following authorities are given to power to carry out an inquiry. The district collector or magistrate based on the complaint or reference made by the CCPA. Commissioner of regional office empowered to inquire into the investigate complaints or all matters falling under the jurisdiction of CCPA, but arise within the jurisdiction of district or region to submit a report to CCPA or CRD as case may be. Mediation is also introduced first time in the consumer protection law. So, mediation is a concept, is a part of the concept of alternative dispute resolution mechanism. So, ADR mechanism is basically that instead of going to the court, any type of court, consumer court, civil court, why people cannot sit outside of the court and solve their disputes in peaceful manner. Okay. It not only saves their time, but it saves lot of energy resources. So, mediation is like a, one type of form of ADR where it is more informal, where two parties are sitting with a mediator, a trained mediator and mediator is not giving them a legal answer, but mediator is trying to help both parties to understand the issue and find a solution. Okay. So, mediator is not giving a judgment. Okay. In arbitration, the arbitrator court they give a judgment award, but in mediation they do not give a judgment, they just help the parties to sit together in a very peaceful manner, talk to each other and if possible try to find a solution. So, most of the time when people sit together, they discuss, they talk, they understand each other's point of view then they can solve their PT issues is like for example, if a company says okay, you have lost suppose 5000 rupees or maybe 10,000, 20,000 rupees, what if, if we are ready to give you this money right now, are you okay? Then maybe the consumer will say okay, I do not want any further compensation, you give me that money or you give me a new product. Okay. So, in that manner, that type of uh, PT of uh, issues can be solved instead of a long litigation before the district court and the state consumer welfare, uh, then national because see the companies will keep going, but that is not good for anyone. If the company is appealing and appealing again and again uh, from district to con uh, state, state to national, uh, just for PT issues like 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, then it is not good for them also because they are uh, utilizing their resources in wrong direction. Reference to mediation by a consumer forum wherever scope of early settlement exists and parties agreed for it. Okay. So, this is very important that the consumer forum can refer that matter to mediation that okay, you have come to me with a dispute, but why not first you try mediation okay. and in mediation if you can find a solution, please come to me, I will help you to enforce that solution. Okay. Mediation serves to be attached to consumer forums no appeal against settlement through mediation. If through the mediation, if parties settle their issue, then the no party can go for appeal. Otherwise, they will keep fighting because the objective was uh, the objective and mechanism of mediation is that both parties are sitting together and they are talking to each other and solving their issues. So, once they decide something in a very peaceful without any force, without any legal boundaries, then that decision cannot be revoked by any party okay. and if they are they do it then it is not a matter of appeal. Chapter 75 uh, in the section 75 chapter 5 of mediation. For the purpose of mediation the national commission or the state commission or the district commission as the case may be shall prepare a panel of mediators to be maintained by the consumer mediation cell attached to it on the recommendation of a selection committee consisting of the president and the member of the commission. Duty of the mediator, it shall be the duty of the mediator to disclose 
any personal, professional or financial interest in the outcome of the consumer dispute. If they have any personal, professional or financial interest in that particular dispute, like for example, if that mediator is working for that company, if that is his or her wife or a husband or some other family member, they are working in that company, they have to disclose that I have some conflict of interest. The circumstances which may arise give a to justifiable doubt as to his independence and impartiality. Okay? Such other facts as may be specified by the regulation. Section 79 sub clause 1, mediation shall be held in consumer mediation cell attached to districts, state and national commission. Section 79 sub clause 2, whenever a consumer dispute is referred to mediation, the circumstances giving rise to the consumer dispute and such factors as the mandatory mediator may deem necessary and shall be guided by the principle of natural justice while carrying out mediation. So, mediation is a way where the new law is trying to solve consumer disputes in out, outside of the court settlement. The mediator, so no mediator shall conduct mediation within such time and in such manner as prescribed by the regulations. Section 89, 81, recording settlement and passing of order. The district, st state or national commission as the case may be shall within 7 days of the receipt of the settlement report pass suitable order recording such settlement of consumer dispute and dispose of the matter accordingly. So, once they receive the report or the settlement statement by the both parties within 7 days these uh, courts will pass an order as per the settlement. Product liability, a manufacturer or product service provider or product seller to be responsible to compensate for injury or damage caused by defective product or deficiency in the services. So, there can be two things, one defective product, the product is defective itself or deficiency in services. Deficiency in services means that if the services are supposed to give suppose like the A level and if they are giving A minus 1 then it can be deficiency in services. The basis for product liability action can be manufacturing defect, there can be one design defect, deviation from manufacturing specifications, not conforming to express warranty, failing to contain adequate instruction for correct use, service providers provided are faulty, imperfect or deficient. So, these are the grounds to claim for the product liability. Consumer dispute redressal, consumer dispute redressal commissions. Like in the case of 1986, the consumer dispute redressal commissions would be set up at various levels and they will be different three levels, district, state and national. E-filing of the complaint, that is a new provision enacted in this law. The new act 2019 provides flexibility to the consumers to file complaints within the jurisdiction consumer forum located at the place of residence or work of the consumer. The new act also contains enabling provisions for consumers to file complaints electronically and for hearing or examining party through video conferencing. So, these are the two very big changes in the interest of consumer, they do not need to travel like for example, uh, you are living in a big city like you know or maybe you are living in a small village for example. So, maybe the district headquarter or the district uh, consumer forum is maybe 60, 70, 80 kilometer from your home. So, instead of traveling 70, 80 kilometer, you can file your case electronically okay? and then you can do video conferencing also, so that you do not need to travel and the same uh, efficiency or benefit is available for people living in cities, in big cities also, because in big cities traveling is very messy, you need to take some leaves also from your office. But if you are doing only video conferencing, you know exactly that what time your case will come and for that only half an hour, one hour, you can focus yourself on the video conferencing and then rest of the time you can continue your job or business. In earlier, people used to get only a date and then they had to spend the entire day for that particular maybe half an hour or one hour and sometimes it is only minutes because if there is nothing happening in your case or the suppose the opposite party is not filing the reply, rejoinder or anything, maybe the judge is uh, absent on that particular day, 
so that video conferencing mechanism is very very useful for consumers and filing uh, cases electronically this is aimed to provide processor ease and reduce inconvenience and harassment for the consumers what is the appellate process so suppose you file your case and then you are not happy okay you are not happy with the judgment of that district court or state court or the national court then as a law you must have right to appeal okay the so the parties involved in the complaints have the right to appeal in the higher forums in respect of any ruling provided by the respective cdrc okay so that is very very important any appeals from the district cdrc would hear in the state cdrc appeals from C state cdrc would taken up the national cdrc and the final appeal beyond national cdrc would taken up by the supreme court so you can see very clearly that the consumer dispute appellate mechanism uh, moves from a district court center center to delhi then delhi to uh, supreme court consumer protection act some few points there are some drastic change made in the law it was introduced to strengthen the consumer interest with the establishment of the regulatory authority section 1 10 sub clause 1 of the new act established the central consumer protection authority to regulate matters relating to violation of the rights of consumer unfair trade practices and false or misleading advertisement which are prejudicial to the interest of public and consumers and to protect promote and enforce the rights of consumer as a class endorsers this is very important this is a new development so we should know about it endorsement is defined as any message verbal statement demonstration or uh, uh, depiction or depiction of the name signature likeliness or other identifiable person characteristics of an individual or uh, deception of the name or seal of any institution or organization which makes the consumer believe this is important which makes the consumer believe that if it is reflects the opinion finding or experience of the person making such endorsement okay so when you see an advertisement you start believing that this particular person is also using the same product so when suppose x hero says that if you use this cream you will be very fair you know so since a long time we were observing and we were feeling that lot of celebrities big guys they were endorsing so many products and services and the people at large they were believing that these those people are really using those products and or that those products have real value like for example if one hero says that if you use this cream then you will be fair in color okay so you start believing that yes if that guy is saying because i have lot of respect for him i have lot of trust for him that cream must have that characteristics to make me fair okay so this is like this is something misleading advertisement it this can be true also so if someone really believes that this cream is having that type of effect then only that person should advertise for that particular cream otherwise it's a misleading statement for the consumer so in that scenario the new law is imposing penalty on endorsers also the ccpa has the power to bring the person advertising the product or service the endorsers okay under the penal provision of the new act for false or misleading advertisement an advertisement may be false or misleading if the advertisement falsely describe a product or service or gives a false guarantee that misleads consumer as to the nature or attribute of the product or service or if the advertisement deliberately conceals important information about the product or services so here now the endorser is also responsible and you can file a case against the endorser also liability several uh, celebrities including shahrukh khan john abraham so many deepika faced the heat of having endorsers fairness cream brands and companies look at en engaging celebrities to attract target consumers the ccpa now holds the endorsers accountable in case of misleading advertisement that features them 
this enhanced secured scrutiny by the CCPA will lead to endorsers being conscious of the brands they endorse. So, now they should be very careful what they are endorsing. If they are endorsing a wrong product, people can go and file case against them. See, not only the product, that is fine. Ultimately, the manufacturer is responsible. It, he was responsible earlier also, but now in 2019 Act, even the endorser will be responsible. When the CCPA finds an advertisement to be false or misleading, it may issue directions in the form of an order to the concerned manufacturer or endorser to discontinue the advertisement or to modify the same within the time frame and manner specified in the order which is not prejudiced to the interest of consumer or the contravention with the consumer rights. So, what they can do? They can issue an order that you please stop this advertisement or you please modify this advertisement or you give more information to the consumer that this is not the reality, this is just like an artistic, you know. So, so you need to tell the consumer something. You cannot make the uh, fool consumers all the time. The CCPA may le uh, levy a penalty of up to 10 lakh rupees on the endorser or a false misleading advertisement at first instance. On further breach, the endorser may be liable a further penalty of up to 50 lakh rupees. In addition to the penalty, the CCPA may also prohibit endorsers from endorsing any other product or service from up to one year at first instance. So, if they believe that this is something more required, they can ask that this particular endorser will not endorse any product for the next one year. On subsequent breach by the endorser, this period of prohibition may be extended to up to three years. So, this is like another liability, another accountability for the endorser. Exclusions. Although the new act imposes a very strict punishment on the endorsers, it also provides for exclusions of the liability of the endorsers in the following instances. The first is section 25 sub clause 5. If the endorsers has exercised due diligence to verify the versatility of the claims made in the advertisement regarding the product or service being endorsed by him or her, the endorser will not be liable to pay any fines or prohibition from the endorsement of other products. So, what does that mean? It means that suppose if I am endorsing a product and I have done my own due diligence, I have inquired properly, I have asked the company maybe in writing, I have taken the some statement of some expert people and from my side I have done enough inquiries, due diligence that yeah, whatever I am going to say that is right. So, it, at the best of my knowledge that is the right information. However, uh, it happens in future that my exercise was not enough and this product is not good for the consumer. In that scenario, I have done my job, so I should not face any penalty or any prohibition. Okay, so, endorsers now they cannot say just like okay, I did not know it. They will ask you what you have done, you know, to know the truth. Have you done any due diligence before endorsing this product? Have you spoken with some expert people? Have you done some scientific inquiries? So, all these things are mandatory if they are able to show to the CCPA that yes, they have done all these exercises to the best knowledge, it was a perfect product or service then they will not be responsible. Section 25 sub clause 2, if the endorser can prove that he or she had published or arranged for the publication of such advertisement in the ordinary course of his business, provided that such a defense shall not be available to the endorser if he had previous knowledge of any order from the withdrawal or modification of such advertisement. Okay? Section 96 sub clause 5, payment of fines as specified by the CCPA for compounding of the offence, the acceptance of such fine by the CCPA or by any officer on behalf of the CCPA shall be deemed to be amount to an acquittal. So, what I was uh, trying to explain in this consumer protection law that I will rephrase it in a simple manner that whenever you feel that there is some defect in the product or deficiencies in service. What you need to do? First thing you need to the court, you can go for the e-filing, 
okay and the court will tell you that okay we will call the manufacturer and endorser and why you cannot go for a mediation then you go for a mediation and mediation is a very simple exercise where a trained mediator he he, he will not he cannot uh, he can or cannot be a lawyer he can be a simple person and that mediator will sit with you try to understand all the ideas the mediator will uh, create a situation where you and the opposite party can talk understand each other's point of view and then try to find a solution if you guys are able to find a workable peaceful solution then you can go to the court the mediator will submit a report that yes both parties have agreed on these terms and conditions then within the seven days court will issue an order when i say court means district consumer commission or state consumer commission or national consumer commission okay yeah, uh, uh, depending on their financial case like for example in district consumer commission you can approach up to 1 crore in the state it's up to 5 crore and about 10 crore rupees you can go directly to the national consumer commission so you have to see whether it's a uh, what is the value of your dispute as per the value of your dispute you choose the uh, consumer dispute commission and once you are happy with the order of the commission uh, through the mediation then both parties are okay matter is closed and then no party can go for appeal okay if you are not happy with the mediation you want to go for litigation then the consumer court will hear you the both parties will be given an opportunity to present their case and then within a reasonable period the commission will give an order and if you are not happy with that judgment or the order you can go for appeal so from district you can go to the state commission from state you can go to the national Com consumer commission and then from national consumer commission you can go to the supreme court okay so this is the mechanism that how consumer uh, litigation happens in india and only in supreme court even in supreme court not necessary but most of the time in supreme court you have to you should hire a lawyer but up to national consumer commission you can fight your case your own you don't need a lawyer especially at the state and and district level i'm saying because national is more like the technical legal arguments but the state and the district mainly you are arguing on the facts okay so you don't need a lawyer you can fight your own case okay so that's a, one of the benefit of consumer dispute mechanism that you don't need a lawyer and the district consumer commission and state consumer commissions are not bound, bound by the cpc civil procedure code which is very complicated and mainly applicable on civil litigations okay here they will follow the principle of natural justice so principle of natural justice as i told you earlier also is very simple common sense type of uh, principles that both parties will be given an opportunity to argue they will be given a, a, a ample opportunity to present their case and no one should be heard without no one should be punished without heard and the court should not have any bias against anyone so all these very basic simple principles will be followed and a very simple in, in very simple language you can uh, fight your case in the district court and district consumer commission and state consumer commission okay so this is the mechanism of the uh, consumer litigation in india and now the new element is that uh, if you believe that some endorser okay if some endorser is endorsing something which is not true in nature in terms of product uh, quality or the efficiency of the services you can also file a case against the endorser endorser means like the celebrity or whosoever is trying to sell that product okay however uh, if that person can explain and convince to the court that uh, he or she has done enough due diligence inquiries then that person will not be responsible if they if they are not able to fulfill that uh, condition then the ccpa consumer uh, central consumer protection authority can issue an order they can go to jail up to 2 years they can pay fine up to 10 lakh rupees for the first offense and up to 50 lakh rupees for the further offenses and if the ccpa believes that it's a routine matter then it's like a you know repetitive uh, offense by the parties or by the endorser 
they can issue in a prohibition order that that particular endorser will not endorse any product for next one year. And still if that person is doing it, that prohibition order can go up to three years. So I think this is a new element in the Consumer Protection Act and uh, I believe that this lecture will help you to understand that consumer protection laws are very, very important because if we do not apply consumer protection law in effective manner, then we cannot get better products and better services. Earlier before this law, there were few uh, limitations, there were few issues in the consumer protection mechanism like for example, e-filing was not allowed. Now even the e-filing is allowed. Earlier video conferencing was not allowed. Now the video conferences are also allowed. And one thing more, if you need a lawyer, if you believe that I need a lawyer but I cannot afford a lawyer, suppose you are a poor person or a poor person is trying to fight a case, even they can ask for a judy, uh, litigation support and advocate support from the district legal service authority and district legal service authority will give them free legal support to file their consumer cases. Okay. So now it is all up to the aware citizen that how much they are aware, uh, educated about their consumer rights. Okay. The system is working in a very nice manner. In every district you will find there is a district uh, consumer welfare agencies, authorities, even there are some officers like as per the CCPA, the district magistrate can also start investigation if you complain against any company or any organization that someone is doing something wrong against the uh, consumers, they can also start investigation. But if you believe that there is something big issue, then the new law also allows class action. You know, I am just giving the new highlights. Okay. So, the new highlight is that the class action suit is available now under the consumer protection law. Earlier that was the issue that for the some big issues, all consumers were, were filing cases here and there. Like for example, there is a national consumer issue. Okay. So maybe 10,000, 20,000 people were filing uh, complaints against that particular company at the district level or state level. So, so for multiple litigations were happening. Okay. So now what they can do, they can approach to CCPA. CCPA will examine whether this case is fit for the class action. If it is fit for the class action, CCPA will file a case against that company as a class action suit. And then whatever outcome is, suppose if there is a positive outcome in the favor of consumer, then all affected parties can go to the uh, CCPA, submit their relevant documents and claim for the compensation. Okay. So, this is the mechanism where we are empowering our consumers okay, against the big companies. Okay. So, now if you understand the consumer rights, consumer protection mechanism, if you understand that now it is a very informal, very relaxed in the favor of consumer, lot of uh, electronic filing, video conferencing, class action suit, a role of mediation is there. Okay. Now, you do not want to go for a long term litigation go for mediation, sit with the company, try to find a solution and then get out from that litigation with your the maximum output. Okay. So, all these things are available now, it is only up to the people how they use this thing. And from company's point of view, this is also very important that instead of very long term fight with so many people, you know, it is good to sit with people, mediate, find a solution. Even the class action suit is also good for the companies because if there is a huge issue, lot of reputational damage is happening, they can solve that issue at the central level. Okay. So, I believe that the new Consumer Protection Act 2019 uh, is bringing lot of positive things for consumers as well as for the companies if they understand the value of consumer protection laws for their personal life and for their business life. Thank you very much. Thank you.